Okay, so where we left off, we were almost done. And since I wanted to do a video of a couple and review things for the new stuff for today, I figured we may as well finish it. So it'll be 2 FT sine theta equals mg. The question wanted you to solve for sine theta. And so when you do that, or excuse me, wanted you to solve for FT. So when you do that, you would divide by the 2 and the sine theta. And now fill your numbers in. So it was 65 kilograms. Little g is 9.81 meters per second squared. And this is over 2 times the sine of 12. And so when you punch your values in, I think you get 1533.5 newtons. Of course, you all aren't here to keep me on track, so let me type that in the calculator just to make sure. Divide it by 2, divide it by the sine of 12. Oh yeah, look at that, it is right. 4, 6 it ends up being. Okay, and so then you're done. All right, new thing from today. Um, it's not really new, but I wanted to, if we were in school today, I would have reviewed with you the three common forces that you were going to see all the time that we started with in grade 11 physics. The first one is gravity, the force of gravity. Okay, which of course we call, whoops, sorry, my hand, we call FG. All right, now you learn from grade 11 that Fg was equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Those of you that had me learned that that really comes from Newton's universal law of gravitation, which is capital G, M1, M2 over R squared. Those of you that didn't have me for physics, you may not have seen this equation before, I'm not sure. But this is really what the force of gravity is equal to. What Isaac Newton discovered was it's not just that the Earth is putting a force of gravity on us and that the Sun is putting it on the Earth and the Moon, between the Moon and the Earth. Really, every object in the universe puts a gravitational force of attraction on every other object in the universe. So even on this beautiful snowy day, you and I are putting a force of attraction on each other. Okay, is it very big? No, it really isn't, but it is still there. Okay, the M1 and the M2 then are the masses of the two objects involved. Whether they are the Earth and the Sun or the Earth and you and me, you or me, or maybe it's between you and your mother, you and your friend that lives in England. Okay, these are the masses. The R is the distance from the center of one object to the center of the other. So distance from center to center of the two objects. Okay, now if it was you and me, center to center wouldn't make that much difference, right? If we measured from the outside edge of our tummy to the outside edge of the other person's tummy, or if we stuck the meter stick like all the way into the middle of our tummy, it's not going to make a big difference in the R. But if we were talking about me and the Earth, then whether I measure to the outer edge of the Earth or the center of the Earth is going to make a big difference. So we always say center to center. And then capital G is the universal gravitational constant. Universal means that no matter where you are in the universe, this value is the same. It's equal to 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Okay, negative 11. What that negative 11 means is if I put my mass in here and your mass in here and we multiply it by something to the negative 11, this is going to be a really tiny number, right? Especially if there's only, even if there's only a meter or two between us, especially if it's you and your friend in England because then the R is going to be really huge on the bottom, which is going to make this small, and the G is already really small, and so the force is going to be minuscule. If we were to do this for two people that are like, let's say, M1 is 50 kilograms, 
and M2 is maybe 60 kilograms. And if we were in the classroom, I'd pick two of you that were sitting beside each other and you would be like one meter apart. And so we could do this GMM over R squared and we could figure out, so what exactly is the force of attraction that you're putting on each other? So to be 6.673 to the negative 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. And it would be multiplied by 50 kilograms and by 60 kilograms. And then it would be divided by 1 meter squared. And so if you were to type this into your calculator, oops, 6.673 to the negative 11 times 50 times 60 divided by 1 squared, you would end up getting a force here of 2.0019 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. That is tiny. So even if you're only a meter apart from a person, you would not be able to feel this force. Okay, so it's so tiny that we would have no sense that someone is putting it on us. So every one of us in a classroom is putting this force on each other. Only if you're further away than a meter, it's even smaller. But none of us are aware of it. Okay, and it's because our masses aren't big enough. Obviously, if you're putting a force on someone in England or Australia or in China or in South Korea, then this distance is even bigger and so this force is even tinier. In order to get a force that's large enough to feel, let's switch one of these two people in for the Earth. The mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And the radius of the Earth is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. So if we trade in the 60 kilogram person for the Earth, then this GMM over R squared becomes 6.673 to the negative 11 newton meters squared per kilogram squared times, we're keeping the 50, I think I just said, 50 kilograms times 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And this time, the radius is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. So, and it, yeah, don't forget to square it. So that's the radius from the center of the earth out you might be, if we were in my classroom, we'd be like six meters above the surface, but we wouldn't have to add that in, okay? And so when we do this, 6.673 to the negative 11 times 50 kilograms times 5.98 to the 24th divided by 6.38 to the 6 squared, you get 490.17 five, let's say, newtons. This is big enough for you to, to feel, okay? This is the pull of the earth on you. This is the pull of you on the earth. Because your mass is tinier, you're going to move with this much force, but the earth's mass is bigger. It's, you're not going to move it, okay? That's why you always move towards the earth instead of the earth moving towards you when you step off your bed in the morning. We know from grade 11 that, oh, let me back up. What if we, before I go there, what if we traded then the 50 Newton per kilogram person in for the 60? All these other numbers would stay the same and we could find the force that the Earth put on the 60 kilogram person. And then we could trade it in for a 100 gram person, or kilogram, excuse me, or 200. And everything would stay the same except the mass of the person. So think back to Newton's time. They didn't have a calculator. And so people back then were saying, you're killing us here. Every time we want to figure out what force the earth is putting on a person, we have to multiply these big numbers together that never change as long as we're at or near the surface of the earth. So if you take your calculator and multiply these guys together, you will get a constant that will not change as long as you're at or near the surface of the earth. Pause the video and do that. All right, if you pause the video and did that, you get something that's very close to 9.81 meters per second squared. It's 9.80 something. It's not quite 9.81 because the mass of the Earth is rounded and the mass of the radius of the Earth is rounded. So that's why this equation in grade 11, we didn't use it. We simplified it to Fg is equal to Mg because we called this little g. 
Okay, we will come back and use this big one when we get to planets, but for now we'll use the 